You are watching TFI. Greetings, salutations, welcome to TFI, where I'm revisiting something that I've already done on the channel, but it's been a good few years. Quite a few people have joined since then, and the original video for this is buried way back in the archive, so I can't expect anyone to go back and find it or know that it exists, and it's still relevant today, and it's still very useful. So this is all to do with benchmarking your PC to assess how good it is at handling Autodesk Inventor. Because you might think your PC is good for Inventor, but how do you know that? You've got no point of reference. But this is a way of creating that reference and comparing it against other people's PCs. It's a program that you download, install, it's safe as houses, trust me on that, and it gives you a number at the end of it. It runs a few tests, gives you a number at the end of the test, which you can then compare against other people to see how well your PC is at Autodesk Inventor in general. And I mean in general, it is, it's a, it's a pretty lightweight test. It's a single part test. It doesn't handle your PC's ability to you know, manage and deal with large assemblies, but it's it's kind of a general use case. Feature creation, drawn creation, graphics tests, save tests, that kind of thing. It doesn't handle it it doesn't it, it doesn't manage large assemblies, basically. That's what I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So how do you get the benchmark right? Well I'm gonna try and keep I try and keep this as brief as possible uh, with a bit of waffling at the end. But you know how I do. So hop on over to Google, put in Autodesk Inventor App Store. You can get to this through Inventor itself, but if you go to the Inventor App Store, link in the description, there's a benchmark tool link here. I'll link that in the description. I'll also put in a link to the OneDrive in the description of the video, and then you can come into here and then download this Inventor Bench 1.7 is the current version uh, for Inventor 2020. Download that, and it'll download 100, it's about 175 megabytes. Aye. It'll download that and then extract it, install it, run Inventor, run the benchmark test, and then that's it. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, and it'll give you the number at the end of it. The number looks a little something like this. This is what the test looks like. And I'll uh, I'll start talking about what the results mean now. So that's that's the bulk of the video. That's what I was hoping to get across. The rest of the video is now just me waffling, so I can now take my time. Okay, so this is what the test looks like. It's broken down into multiple modules. So the test goes through several steps. It starts off by opening up Inventor and then timing how long that takes. That bit's actually meaningless. I don't think that actually contributes towards the overall score. It does a number of feature calculations. It builds a model from scratch using preset automation. And then that's this bit here. And then it does a rebuild and times how long that takes. That's this bit here. It does graphical tests here. It measures that in Hertz for some reason. That's Inventor. Will not go there. Uh, but yeah, the higher number, the better. Uh, by the way, I don't want to get into it, but this has got this has got nothing to do with the graphics card. You can have a 2080 Ti or a GeForce 1660. It doesn't matter. You'll get the exact same. I mean, in the same PC, swapping out, you get the same score here. It's Inventor is not graphics accelerated. the The, the graphics performance is entirely CPU driven. Uh, I've got. I, I'm not going to get into an argument with anyone about that. I have exhausted that topic to death, and uh, there's all kinds of uh, evidence on my channel for that. Uh, the the model save time it saves a 20 megabyte part and times how long that takes. If yours takes longer than other people's, that's not necessarily because you've got a slow hard disk. I've got a, for example, a, a Samsung 970 Evo here. That can write gigabytes per second, but it still takes three or four seconds to save a 20 megabyte part. You can do the maths on that. It's not a direct representation of how fast your disk can write. There's other things going on when Inventor saves a part. So if you, if yours has taken excessively long, you have to think about, well, is antivirus software interjecting security software? Go, is there other stuff going on which is causing that to slow down? It's not always just because you're, you, you drive slow. Uh, then there's some drawing tests. Uh, how long does it take to create the views, rebuild views, that sort of stuff. And then the creator of the test has taken all of the, the times and then he's got some kind of algorithm which creates this final number called the IPI, uh, the Inventor PC Index, and then that's what we use really to compare between PCs. 
up above, this is the specs of the PC. Sometimes you can get squiffy results here. He's just reading straight from uh, the, the the system info, and sometimes it can report it in a weird way, uh, like your display link USB device instead of the actual graphics card. Uh, and then the hard disks in the solid state drives can be read in weird ways. It depends which port they're plugged into on the motherboard. But uh, yeah, that's it. So breakdown of the scores very quickly. Between zero and six, shall we say. Up that, if you get a score between zero and six, uh, that's dreadful. Absolutely god-awful PC. You should probably think about throwing that PC in the bin. Not you don't even think about selling it. It's an awful PC. It should not be used in business. Uh, it's, it's but it's amongst the worst of the worst. Between seven and ten is average. You'll get away with it. You know it's okay. Probably not the best. Uh, hope you didn't pay too much for it. <sighs> you, you should probably be thinking about an upgrade. Right, between 7 to 10. 11 to 13, very good. All right, that's a very, very, very good score. Uh, and you're, you're, you're probably amongst the, the majority. Yeah, between 11 and 13. Between 13 and 15, they're the best of the best. Right, between 13 and 15 are the highest scores that we're getting in the benchmark test. The absolute highest of the highest scores ever is around 15.5 to 16-ish, right? Those are, we've never seen anything higher than a 16. So that's the, the metrics that we're going off here. The best PCs that produce the, the highest scores always have a 9900K in it as of today. Historically, before the 9900K was released, it was the 8700K. Before the 8700K, it was the 7700K. Before that, it was the 6700K. Before that, it was the 4790K. There's a there's a trend. It's because Inventor is entirely CPU bound. So the CPU with the fastest clock frequency always produces the highest scores in the benchmark test, which directly translates into Inventor requires a PC with the fastest clock speed. That's entirely what it boils down to. Graphics cards don't matter whatsoever. You just need to make sure you've got a supported card with a driver that isn't going to cause you crashes and has enough VRAM to to, to cache the textures that you're working with. So you don't need a Quadro P6000 in here or an RTX 6000. It's not going to give you any benefits whatsoever in Autodesk Inventor. But uh, enough RAM to cover the data sets that you're working with. More RAM does not make things go faster. Uh, this guy's got 64 gig of RAM. Massive diminishing returns in this test. This test only uses a couple of, a couple of gigabytes. He might use hundreds of thousands of parts worth of assemblies in his day-to-day -day tasks so you might need that much ram but it's not going to make his pc go any faster having that much ram and it's certainly not going to make this test give him a better score having that much ram but this test here 15.38 was one of the best that we've seen and it was obviously with the 9900k so what i've got here is a, a a sample of a couple of tests that i've taken from the thread on the inventor forums which is called how fast is your inventor pc really i'm heavily invested in this thread i'm all over it i've got numerous results pasted in here from pcs off the channel uh, and there's hundreds and hundreds of results from other people pasted into this thread the, the thing is it's 1700 posts long everything you could possibly want to know about how inventor works with pcs and how pcs interface with inventor and what you need and how things work is in this th it's, it's here but it's impossible to find unfortunately uh, i've tried my best on my channel to kind of articulate everything you need to know so for example check out how to buy the best workstation for inventor that video that i've done i've done two of them everything you need to know about workstations and inventor is in those videos uh, and it's those videos were a the end result of sort of years of research research for myself and using different pcs with inventor and testing different configurations and all that kind of stuff uh, and a lot of that has come from this thread so if you just go to various pages of this thread you'll find results pasted all over here 
there'll be one in here. See, here's one here. This is an 8700K, which pulled a 15.09, respectable score. Anything in the 15s is the best of the best. Absolute best of the best. Um, so that's a, that's a very good score. And you can compare each individual module, each individual test with other PCs to see how they compare if you really want to. So that's how the test works. Uh, and I, like I said, I've taken some individual tests just to show you some some interesting things that have that have come out from the years that this test's been going. So this one here is a workstation that I've recently been sent by Lenovo. So this workstation's probably in the region of two and a half to three grand, I would have thought. It's a Lenovo P520, very high-end workstation. Uh, it's got 32 gig of RAM. It should have had 64, but it's only got 32. It's a sing it's running in single channel mode, which actually doesn't really matter that much for Inventor. Quadro RTX 4000, pretty capable graphics card. Uh, and the, the CPU is what most marketing staff would tell you is what you need for CAD. It's the workstation branded Xeons, the Xeon W2145, eight cores, Boosts up to 4.5 gigahertz, 3.7 base clock, and it pulled an 11.26, which is okay. You know, like I said, 10 to 13 is okay. It's within the most common realm of scoring that we we'll see. You know, you're not going to be you're not going to be dissatisfied with a PC that scores 10 to 13. You're not going to be unhappy with how it performs day in and day out. But it's not the best of the best. Yeah. But for two and a half to three grand, 11 is reasonable, reasonable. It's not something that I would buy though for a design office knowing what I know. Do you know what I mean? Uh, the point here being is that's a workstation grade CPU and it doesn't pull the best scores for Autodesk Inventor. Putting that into contrast, two and a half to three grand workstation, scoring an 11, this next test is my workstation Slayer build from the channel. 12.29 on the test link up here. You can build and or buy and build this yourself. Ryzen 5, six cores, very capable for most tasks. Simulation, got that covered. Six cores can do most jobs. 16 gig of RAM can handle most data sets, except, you know, huge data sets. Uh, Radeon RX 580. Graphics cards have come along since I put this video together, so you can probably change and shift that out to something different if you're not quite comfortable going with an AMD graphics card but a 12.29 is encroaching very closely upon the best of the best like I said 13 to 15 is the best of the best uh, the point of this test is to prove that if you know what inventor needs from a PC if you know what its requirements are you can build a PC for, for pretty cheap but which is extremely capable for the job, and that's exactly what this is. It's an almost perfectly targeted PC for Autodesk Inventor, uh, but on a, a pretty, pretty tight budget. Uh, but it's extremely capable. Extremely capable. Uh, moving on, uh, the i9-9900K. So this is another example of how the test and the, uh, the CPUs themselves can be inconsistent. So the highest scores ever uh, were coming from the 9900K, 15 plus, but I built a 9900K system for work and it only scored 12.74. And I can't, that could have been down to multiple reasons. Software on the system getting in the way, uh, antivirus software interjecting, it's different silicon i don't know but i couldn't get anything higher than a 12.74 on my 9900k other people seem to be getting 15 pluses so that was put in here just to show and highlight that the test can be inconsistent and even on the same pc right you can run your benchmark test score a 12.1 you could just rerun the test straight away and get a 12.3 run it again get an 11.9 because Inventor is entirely CPU bound, it assigns Inventor to a core on the CPU. Whilst Inventor is running, other processes could get assigned to that core and just the slightest of uh, interference on that core takes resource away from Inventor and that can impact the, the, result, the results of the benchmark test just ever so slightly. So it's it's margins of error, of course it is, but uh, it's, you're never going to get the exact same 
uh, score from test to test there's always going to be variance and then at the other end of the spectrum i've put in a couple of tests here which just highlight how workstations can be exposed as kind of shouting and bawling and being really good and being sold as the best for card and you know this is the powerhouse workstation chomp through your card and engineering workflows blah 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 but then you run them through an inventor benchmark test and you see they're actually not suitable at all and this is a one such workstation it's the intel xeon silver 4108 it's a current gen scalable xeon and this is still available to be put in workstations absolutely rubbish for cad and uh, it's available to be put in your workstations right now 5.69 terrible uh, so yeah you just got to be careful which ones you go for because if it's available to be put into a configurator for a Dell Precision or an HP Z workstation, it's easy for people to think, well, if it's available, it must be suitable for the job, but that's not necessarily the case. Uh, and here's another example of a, a pretty poor result. This is someone who had a 10-year-old workstation uh, and it pulled a 2.94 on the test. But this, this was a genuine, valid example of why this test exists. Uh, it was just highlighting how poor his PC was. It was 10 years old. It's a Xeon E5620. If you Google it, you'll see how bad it is. It's pretty old. But it's it's a good example of how you, you know you could have a you could be working in a company where the, the director buys a, a suite of workstations and thinks right that's me set I've bought the workstation I don't need to think or worry about that for a long time and then ten years goes by and he still feels like it's only been five minutes since he bought the workstations and they're still good enough for the job but ten years later if this happens you know technology moves on the software requires different instruction sets that the pcs and workstations aren't capable of handling and before you know it your workstations are pulling a 2.94 and taking 25 seconds to, to model an invented part which modern pcs take three or four seconds to do so um yeah that's exactly what this benchmark tests for it's to test your pc to see how good it is at inventor today so i think i'll leave it there mate uh that's probably enough there's I could talk about this this so i've got so much up here on all of this that i could talk for for hours on it but i think 20 minutes is probably enough um but yeah feel free to grab the benchmark test test your pc log into this uh, to this inventor thread and post your scores in here have a look through it post have a scroll through compare your scores with other people's uh but yeah just i've given the general rule of thumb as to where your pc lies if it's a 7 or if it's a 10 or if it's a 13 or if it's a 15 or where, wherever it falls um, but before you run the test just make sure your pc is running 1080p if you're running at 4k that does slow the benchmark test down although it's still a valid score it's not comparable to other people's scores because most people run it in 1080p so yeah just run it in 1080p uh Make sure you're on the latest version as possible of Inventor. Put the service packs on. Uh, shut down any background services that might be running. Disable your antivirus if you can. Uh, disable cloud syncing of Dropbox and whatever else. Just background services that might be chomping away. Uh, and it just makes it a fair test to compare it against other people. So there you go, mate. Have a go. See how you do. Put your score in the comments or head on over to the thread and post it in there. Just take a screen print and post it into the uh, to the thread. Uh, it's it, Everyone over there is quite interested to see what other people's PCs are doing so they can compare theirs to others. Or if someone's looking for a new PC, they can they, they see how other PCs are doing. Um, but I always use this test when I'm putting PCs together on the channel. Uh, it's a good way of obviously measuring how good a PC is for Inventor. So, neat. Knock that on the head there, mate. Thanks very much. See you in the next one. Doodies.